Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we get the usual sp- suspects today on this week's roundtable. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. It's great to see you. It's been hours since. I know. We- it's been hours. Uh, we've got Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Sorry I missed you all. Excited to hear how it went. You you were there in the room for sure. Like, I felt I it. You felt it. You felt the light. <laughs> yeah, we've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? Hi, Mark. I'm doing great. Running on caffeine. Keeping me alert and awake. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'd say half my life is being run that way now. So good on you. And then we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, the Big Papa. How are you, Tate? I'm good. Dealing with the boot camp hangover, but happy to be on the call. Yeah, it's a, it's a good hangover though, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just drinking lots of water, you know, trying to get back on schedule. Naps, lots of naps. Lots of naps. But good. And then, of course, last but not least, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I have no boot camp hangover. Do you know why? Why? You share. Because I slept it off. Like, I didn't race out like you guys did. I stayed there. I... I was in bed that Sunday night by like 9.30. I was able to sleep until like 7, got it all out of me. And I didn't have to worry about the, the I think the, the travel is the double whammy. Yeah. I don't know. I feel refreshed. Great. Like, I feel like you guys are slacking now. Like, come on. I'm definitely slacking. I'll just be honest. <laughs> I'm, 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 dragging. I'm, I'm having Tate send me some of that, that Vegas hangover tonic that you get. Just you know, not isn't not from it, alcohol. Isn't it eating like just raw eggs or something? Like, isn't that what you did? I don't know. I just sleeping. <laughs> I I have to tell you though, it was it was an amazing room. It was an amazing boot camp. Everyone there was so great, so cool to hang out with. There wasn't anybody there I wouldn't hang out with, honestly. You, you know what's really what was really cool is um is like really seeing like um everybody like come together and like they're, they're all so motivated. Everybody that's there is motivated. Like they really want to make a change in their lives. They really want to change things up. And like everybody that, that comes there, that brings that energy is so much easier to teach in that room or to lead the room when the room has that, as opposed to, you know, like people who, who don't believe or the people who are skeptical because then that creates a negativity in the room. So it's really kind of cool that this room had like more of that feel I felt like. Oh yeah. It, it was really cool. I mean, it's really cool. Like at the break, like, you know, Jeff Detmer's coming in and talking about his case study, how he closed the deal in real time at boot camp. John Burnett did the same thing. Of course, you know, Mimi's in the background. How many, clo- how many deals did you close at boot camp? Mimi? I have three, but I have, I have two that are super close that came out of that too. So three. So wait, almost five? Yeah. So that, see, there is boot camp magic. And then yeah. uh, the land duo, Jen and Tyler Kelly, they closed, how many deals did they closed today? Five in the, five since boot camp ended. Five since boot camp ended. And then there's Roberto in the background. Hey, Tate, I got the 12,000 a month passive, right? Like, well, and not only like that. Like it's nothing. Like, pa- Mark, like past the potatoes. Mark, he's doing a deal right now where he's going to pay off all of his student loans in one go. Ooh. That's awesome. I mean, one go. And he's an attorney. He probably has some su- substantial student loan. Yeah. yeah. He does. Yeah, that's right. It's not like. It's not you know, undergraduate. Not, not college. community college. Yeah. It's, it's law school. Yeah. One go. I mean, we talked about it today. We came up a game plan and we kind of came to this conclusion that once those are gone, he's free. He'll probably be retiring. 
Yeah. I mean, you know, the funny thing is though, like we always say comparison is a thief of happiness and it is fun to throw out these numbers, but if you're not doing those numbers, so what? This is a marathon, not a sprint. As long as you're mailing and marketing, you're doing the business, you'll get there. So there's, there's no, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up. And, um, and I think that was also sort of the, the theme of, of the weekend as well was how much is enough. Right. And, uh, it was, it was really special to, uh, to just be there and, and feed off that energy and see everyone's success and excitement. And even Lamar Bunce, uh, was great. Like he voxed me after the weekend. He's like, I made the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. And that being said, I'm still more excited about land than I am being on the front page of the newspaper. Like, that's cool. That was really cool. So our round table topic, because we could talk about boot camp the entire time, is something that I think is so important for people to really kind of nail down mentally, which is the importance of time versus money. And a lot of people, I think, don't even realize how valuable their time is, or if they, they might have some kind of general idea about it. So Eric Peterson, what is your take on time versus money? I was just sitting here thinking, oh, Mark's going to start with me and I don't want to go first. I'll go first. <laughs> so, um, you know, in this business, uh, especially getting started, I think that it's very easy to look at all these tasks that have to be accomplished. Um, you know, and let's, let's say you're past the point of knowing how to do them. So, so you've done them, you know how it's supposed to work. In theory, you could hire it out and have someone else do that for you. So you've got more time for other things. But I think so often what we see um, in new students especially is that, you know, they don't want to spend that money. Um, even though it might be just, a few dollars a week um, to a VA to, to scrub a list or to get a list. Um, instead, they're like, well, it's only going to take me an hour um, or a half hour to, to do that particular task. And, and I'll just keep doing it for now. And I'll wait till, you know, I have more revenue coming in or, or whatever that, that time is. Um, but the reality is, um, if they really look at it, their time is, is worth much more than that. If they can do the task or get the task done for $10 um, and it's going to take them a half hour or an hour to do, their time is very likely worth more than $10 an hour. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about the, the time value of money. Um, but that's, that's kind of my thought on it just to start us off. All right, Bearland Aaron, you want to piggyback on that? Yeah. Um, you know, I guess it becomes a mindset issue. Um, when you're bootstrapping, you know, it's a necessity that you do a lot of stuff yourself. Um, and then once you have some income coming, you know, you need to switch your mindset to the other direction and let go of a little bit of cash to free up your time, but it's a really hard thing to do. And I think it really, um, it depends on maybe like how long you've been doing something yourself or your past experiences in life, uh, maybe another job or, or another business where, you know, that entrepreneurial kind of attitude is, you know, get it done, do it yourself, move on, you know, that sort of thing. Um, it, you need to, begin to think a different way because um, when your mindset is saving money, doing it yourself, you're into that scarcity mindset, you know, and it's like, I don't think you can truly get into that other mindset of abundance until you can learn how to uh, value your time correctly and get, get tasks that don't give you that, um, that high, I don't, I don't mean reward, but you know, that, that dollar for per minute kind of, um, reward, you need to get those off so that you can kind of shift over into that abundance mindset and create something abundant. Otherwise you'll, oh, it'll always be scarce. You're going to do it yourself. You're not going to pay somebody. 
you know, that's definitely a real thing. So. No, a- absolutely. We talk a lot about that at, at boot camp. Mimi Schmidt, time versus money. What are your thoughts? Well, even though monthly I sit down and I look at what I need to automate or delegate, in my mind I had, you know, we've been told that the sales part is the last part you get rid of. And so I, um, in my mind, I thought I wasn't ready for that yet. And this past boot camp was, it was a, it was an awakening for me too, because I was so busy with leads and I was so grateful. Tate and Eric said to me, Mimi, you need to hire someone to help you with these leads. And it's true. I have so many leads. I truly can't manage them all. And I, I, I feel like a lobster in a pot where I was fine. You know, I was thimming my days and I'd set my habits and was trying to keep to those, um, you know, my mailing Monday, da, 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 da. And it was getting to where I couldn't get to the other things because I was chasing so many leads and it it become painful and I didn't even realize it. So I need to not wait a month. I need to just, if something is painful, I need to start thinking about how am I going to automate or delegate that, right? Um, And I also had a coaching student uh, go to a conference recently just about success and home businesses. And he heard this quote, I don't know who said it, that if you're not delegating your work or automating your work, you're, if you're either in the beginning of your business or you're failing at your business. I mean, it's understandable that when you're building your business, a lot of it you're going to do yourself because you want to learn it. But if you're all in, you're, you know, you've got to delegate that or you're going to be failing at your business. There's not a lot of gray there. No, no, there's, there's really not. There's really not. Big Papa. What do you want to add to this discussion? I would say this, like I'm a cheap guy and it is hard for me sometimes to realize that I don't have to do something and I can find somebody else to do it for me for less. And and some of it comes down to maybe I still enjoy it or, um, but the reality is my time is spent is better off spent helping out with my family than it is doing certain things. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to work on my business while somebody else is doing something for me. I mean, I'll outsource things all the time that just allow me to have a little bit more freedom and not think about things. And everybody's time is worth way more than what you think it's worth. And I was chatting with somebody this past weekend and they said, Oh, I've got a, one of my to do's from boot camp is, um, I need to learn this new, new program. I said, why do, you, why do you have to learn that? I mean, don't you understand the basic concept of how it works? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, all right, so go hire somebody. And we looked online and we found somebody who was an expert in this field for $7 an hour. And we hired them right there on the spot and they're going to work an hour a week for them. And boom, we just removed one pain point. So it's kind of interesting. And I've said it many, many times. I'm not an expert at anything except hiring experts. And I think this is where that concept of time versus money comes in really heavily in my life is there are people out there who are the best at certain tasks and they will do it for me for a very, very fair price. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I mean, I'm going to give Scott Todd his, his take, but I've got a, I've got a few opinions I want to share. Well, Mark, I, I would say that, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't know what their time is worth, right? Like, you know, they, they really struggle with that piece. And it's really kind of a, it really, it really is a kind of an ego thing when you stop and think about like, oh, well, my time is worth, you hear people like say this all the time, like, oh, my time is worth $2,000 an hour. You'll, you'll hear like fancy attorneys say that when they're talking down to the car dealership or whatever it is. And so, you, you know, you hear this thing and you're like, oh, well, that guy's just being pompous. Well, he's not being pompous. He, he truly is somebody that, that understands the value of his time. And it's not, sometimes people think like, oh, let me do my billable rate. Well, your billable rate or, you know, like what you earn per hour, that is not what your time is worth. I think a lot of people like get, get stuck with that because they're like, oh, well, you know, I make a lot of money at my job, $25 an hour at my job or $50 an hour at my job. And they think, well, that's what my rate is worth or my time is worth. And it's worth way more than that. Honestly, your time is worth what you say it's worth. Like that's because that's how you're valuing it. 
And so what I always say is like, find, find, find the amount of money that you want to make divide by the number of hours a year that you want to work. And that's your hourly rate. Now, anything that's less than that in terms of that you can hire somebody for, for less than that, well, then you're, you're making money there. And anybody that's over that will then maybe figure out how to do it yourself. But what you'll find is that very few people are over what you think that your time is worth when you stop and put it in that, that formula. So now go down the path, you'll find that the, the crazy things that we do, sometimes we get in our own way. Hey, let me, uh, let me go wash my car as opposed to getting on sales calls and calling people. Because honestly, the salespeople, that's where all the money is in this business. So that's where you should be spending all your time, not let me go wash my car or let me go create a logo or, oh, let me go work on my website. All of that is crap because none of it, none of it makes the cash register ring. It might one day, but the reality is, is that that stuff is the stuff that really you should be focusing on, the sales piece, right? Like the, the money, make the cash register ring and that's where you're gonna earn your money. But you need to really come to grips with what your time is worth and how much money you're truly losing by, oh, let me go work on my logo or, oh, let me go do the easy work or, oh, let me go scrub my list. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the more tragic things that happen for people is the entrepreneurial paradox where they quit their 40 hour a week job to work 80 hours a week in their own business. How is that a good trade off? Okay. So you got rid of your boss and now what you're not, I mean, that's kind of unsustainable for a long period of time. Now. Yeah. If you're in your twenties and you're, you're starting up, you know, a, a company and, you got to do what you got to do. Like there's nothing wrong with bootstrapping, but you need to be able to have this mindset of what is my time worth? How do I delegate, automate, automate, systematize, eliminate so that I can really enjoy my life, which is the ultimate sort of end game of doing all this anyways. Nobody has any passion for the raw land. They have passion for the, the business provides them and their family, which is more freedom more flexibility, more time, the elimination of money stress so they can do what they really want to do in life. And I think not having that sort of awareness of why you're doing this and working systematically to get there is, is, is nothing short of tragic, honestly. Um, all right, I'll get off my soapbox. Let's go to our, uh, our tip of the week. Does anyone have any final thing they want to say. All right, I'll say it one more time and that's it. You can always make more money. You can't get more time. <laughs> I knew that's it was it. coming. I knew it was that's coming. That's it. I thought if he makes it through this entire soapbox speech without saying it, I'm going to have to never show up on this round table again. But it's true. It's it true. Is true. But, but I just knew you were going to say it. It is right. true. When are you going to die? Tell me, what day are you going to die? Unlike you guys, I don't have a death calculator or a death yeah. clock or something. I'm still in my twenties, man. My life is good. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, you know, work on your gratitude journal, read the newspaper. Like it's just pure luck, right? These random things can happen to you. Terrible luck, right? Like every precious moment, every moment is precious. Every single moment. How's your smell, Mark? Can you smell well? Is your sense of smell really good? Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as your sense of smell is good, st study shows that uh, those people with weakened or lower sense of smells have a 50-50 chance of not making it 10 years. I think you're good. I think you might be good, Matt. Well, are, you good. are you left-handed? People that are left-handed have a 10-year less life expectancy than the righties. I'm a left-handed. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Are you uh -oh. serious? Is that, that's not a thing. No, that's, it's an actual, that's a fact. That's, that's a fact. You know what it is. It's the stress of dealing with like right hand cameras and right hand everything for all you people. It le lessens our lifespan. Tate's worried now. I mean, He's I'm out. not like super worried, but I am going to go to the Oracle and see if this is actually true. It's true. Oh. Do <laughs> <Is it painless? laughs> it's true. Have a shorter life. All right, well, Tate is looking that up. Let's go to Mitt. 
for our okay. tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable to improve Actually, our businesses, improve our lives. It's called Avocado, but it's, sell, it's, it's spelled A-B-O-C-H-A-T-O.com. And it's a Slack integration that allows you to text. I had my first text sale this weekend, and I honestly get a better response from texting than I do from emails. So, um, and I do think that um, it's a more current way of communication, texting versus emailing. But um, I think once you join, you can get a free trial. Once you join, I think it's the lowest uh, subscription is 50 bucks a month. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, uh, I got on Luke Harris's text stream and it was, it was oh, awesome. Good. He's still texting me if I want to buy land. Like, I think I did or so. Yeah, buy land. I think I do want to buy it. Yeah. Like I, I love getting those texts. Yeah, I got a guy this weekend, a Land Moto guy, send me the Land Moto thing and said, uh, he, you know, text me a payment link. Well, I couldn't do that, but I could text in my website. It's so easy to text from your laptop, too, because I used to text somebody and look at my CRM and type it in my phone, right? If I could do it right from the CRM, you know, paste a website link or a Google fo Drive folder for people to flip through pictures on their phone, then um, that can engage them more readily. Yeah, see, I see your absolutely. face there. What do you? Um, what am I thinking? Yeah, we um, I really, I really like it, but I don't like the price. Yeah, I'm with you. Fifty bucks a month. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty expensive, and then if you want Zapier integration, it's like two hundred bucks a month if you're oh on the gosh. annual plan. And, and so, I mean, I love the idea, and I'm just like, there's got to be a cheaper option. <laughs> and at fifty bucks a month, you only get twelve hundred and fifty messages. Only. <laughs> well, that's that's not very how, do we, how do we how do we make this cheaper? I know there's a way to do it. I don't know, but I I love the idea of tying it into Slack because yeah. you all know I love Slack. So yep. I mean, I'm all about that. But I mean, what, but there's a site you can go to that that integrates to all this. It's um it's Twilio. Right, Scott. Why don't we integrate Twilio into LG Pass? I think that's a fabulous idea. Scott's not answering me. Uh, so that we can get text in there. I don't think we want that in LG Pass. We don't. I don't. I well, I would. We'd want I would think that. Um, like there, there's a. Um, was it? I think it's called Call Fire. Callfire.com might be a better solution that you could integrate into Slack potentially. And if not, you could do it through Zapier, but you could also do a zap through Twilio. Um, oh, there too. All right. So there's, so there's a way to do it. There's no. a way. You might not have to think about it. This is like an easy done for you kind of a thing. If you value your time and you don't want to go create the, recreate the wheel, Mark. No, you're right. And I apologize for even, you know, <laughs> saying that. But that being said, Twilio is already out there. It's not like I'm going to create my own SMS service. The service is already there. I'm just trying to be, look, there's a difference between being resourceful and, and saving time, right? Or yeah. No? yeah. I mean, look, I'm not out here spending an hour clipping coupons. Like I understand <laughs> the value of my time in that regard. But if I can take three seconds and do a little Google search, I think I'm Wait, I didn't get the memo. I, that's all I do on Sundays is just cut out those coupons. Is that wrong? That is so wrong. With your hourly rate, you should be doing nothing else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look, whatever you do, do not do this. Do not, when your wife asks you to do something, like, hey, will you clean, will you take the garbage out? Do not go ninja style on her and say, do you know what my hourly rate is? That does <laughs> not end well. That's Isn't the your hourly rate yeah. less than mine? Does not end well. Don't do it. Yeah. No. I see that. Absolutely not. Because basically that hourly rate goes, divides by two. <laughs> Real fast. For life. For life. For life. <laughs> For life. Yeah. And if it yeah. goes up, it's still divided by two. It, yeah. It's still yeah. divided by two. Be better just to take the garbage out with a big smile and just, you know, feel so grateful that you even have a garbage to take out. 
<laughs> yes, honey. Yes. On it. Yeah. Than the alternative. This sounds like a negative hourly rate. Yes, like that, that's what it would be. Negative yeah. hourly rate. Negative hourly rate. All right. Well, I thought yeah, this podcast was, for her company. Was, uh, was very enlightening. And I hope the listeners are finding that to be the case. And if you want to help us out, send the podcast to a friend. Email to them. Put it on, on the interwebs. The social media sites. I don't know what the cool kids are using these days. The Instagrams, the Facebooks, the, the Twitters, whatever it is. Um, please share it. Also subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. And if you truly, truly understand, like truly deep in the bowels of your soul, the value of your time, you have an ethical obligation to learn more about how we can help you get to the next level in your land investing business to make more money with less time by learning about Flight School Live in Flight School. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Get on a call with the Nightcap Meister, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, and they will walk you through exactly the ROI that you are going to get on your time, on your money, in these really, I mean, I don't think I'm, um, this is hyperbole, revolutionary programs. Mimi doesn't like the word. No? Yeah? Good? Yes. yes. Eric, is, is, Eric, is it an exaggeration? No. No. We had over a quarter million dollars of passive income at boot camp this weekend. It, that was so gratifying to see. Really? And, I mean, and honestly, I think it's more because there was money in the room that we didn't even count. Like there was money in the, in the audience that we either didn't know or could capitalize on or to capture, I should say. So there, there was more. There was more. That, that was low. How many, we didn't even calculate the money in the VIP room, right, either. We only calculated yeah. maybe. We just looked around the room as, at that snapshot right then. We didn't count everybody down the other room either. Wow. Pretty cool. Right. Real money in the room is what it was. I'll tell you where a lot of money is. Is right on this round table. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it's free. Honestly, yeah. you know my you know my hourly rate is Mark. <laughs> what is <that? laughs> I'm just right here. I'll tell you what. You're losing a lot of money right now. But yeah. you know what though? You can't put a price on this kind of fun. Honestly, like what no, else? Well, as long as we call it fun and not work, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tate's losing a lot of money on the bike. He loves it. Yeah. I, true. I tell my wife, I'm like, Hey, listen, I gotta get on. A, I gotta get on another round table. And it's like the most fun I have all week. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. like a club in here. <laughs> yeah. Just I leave mean, it away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Eric's like telling his wife, look, I can't practice the guitar. I gotta <laughs> get on the round table. Right. She's like, do you realize how much, you know, it's all good. Mark. Bearland Aaron. I mean, Bearland Aaron, I don't even want to know. But you know, the, what's funny is that he's not even able to even process this for a couple minutes anyways. Mark. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming to him. He'll start laughing real loud in a few minutes. Yeah. Exactly. I was in my County two weeks ago for my. See, there he goes. There he goes. Did you see that? <laughs> I was in LA. And we drove by a carriage, a horse-drawn carriage, and I was trying to get pictures of it so I could send them to you, Aaron, but my husband was driving too fast. But I thought of oh, you. God. By the way, we converted a new land geek in Dave Schmidt. That was pretty exciting. Yes, it was fun. That was really, that was really was fun. fun. Yeah, he enjoyed meeting all of you guys. Mimi, me, me, I got to ask you, like, when, when – because he's a pilot when you're driving down the road does he like say like i feel the need the need for speed and then take he, off he believes because he you know can travel at mach one that he has this expanded situational awareness that is above all of ours so he can speed as fast as he wants and like well honey yes you're probably the best driver on the east coast i'll give that to you but not everyone around you is as good as driver as you, and you can't anticipate what they're going to do. So, yes, we constantly have this issue. And because I will tell you, like, in, he has a lot more hours of flying than I do, but I will tell you that I do believe 
that that being a pilot does give you better. So I agree with what he's saying about situational awareness because like I feel like I feel like I can keep the car rolling straight and and still know what everything that's going around me and still look at little instruments in the car, cell phone, whatever, like, oh, look, yes. reading my wife's phone. Like, I got it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. I still see it yeah. all. Like, I don't know. Like, and then other people freak me out when they do it. But um, like for me, I feel like I got it under control. Same so, thing. And he's he an instructor right. pilot. So he feels like he needs, at any time he sits in the right hand seat that he needs to tell you what to do. So even uh -huh. today, driving Natalie to school, I'm like, honey, you can sit there, but this is not an instructional drive. And sure enough, the way he started to, I said, this is not an instructional drive. <laughs> Back seat, <it>, baby. <laughs> yes. Agree yeah. with you, Scott. Yeah, see? All right, well, I want to thank all the listeners again. <laughs> and uh, we'll see everybody next week all right tate you got to come out here man i found a new indian buffet and it's not even a buffet it's like it's like really good it's not like you go up and get your food like they give you like seven different dishes Ooh. Wow. i think they're losing money nobody can go for like they're like only six people in the last five months have been able to do round two four of them are teenagers <laughs> one was like a massive individual and the other one was like like this really like diminutive woman who could just like systematically eat really like a ton of food. All right. I'm game. Are you game? Ooh. I'm game. Let's do it, man. Yeah. You just left. What yeah, but it's a good Indian. I mean, that's worth a trip. It's not far. It's a 45 minute flight for me. What restaurant are we eating at the night before boot camp in, in Vegas? It's, it depends. I got to figure out uh, where our hotel is. I don't even know. Is it the Westin? The strip, man. It's on the Strip. It's a different hotel this time, right? Yeah, it's the Westin on the Strip. Ooh, the Westin's nice. On the Strip? Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Oh, it's no. By, um, yeah. It's by the Flamingo? Damn, yeah. I just sent out the link today. I think we're going to allow 200 people to register for the boot camp because I think 50% of them are not going to show up just from the Strip. <laughs> like they're like just gonna get lost in vegas i will say it seemed like there were a lot more east coasters by about 20 than there were midwesterners well, yeah it's a no-brainer for them mimi at the phoenix boot camp yeah it's a no-brainer remember get out of the snow it snowed mark you had everybody raise their hands i was so impressed with how many east coasters were represented yeah, it no, snowed the, here when you guys were at boot camp yeah. I mean, we're doing, we're doing this for the East Coasters so they can get out of that, that environment and get to a better environment. Like, what a gift, right? Ah, I see where we are. Yeah. What are yeah, you see? Is it a good area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's downtown. It's right behind the Flamingo. Yeah. Wow. It'll be. Oh man, this is dangerous, man. Uh -oh. It's right by the Bellagio, and. Uh oh. Wow! Uh -oh. Really good. Maybe shopping. we hit the Bellagio buffet. There's good shopping. That's one of my favorites. It's There's it's right by the Link too, which is really cool at night. You go up on the Ferris wheel. Oh, Mark, wow. they got a restaurant at the Bellagio. It's down on the waterfront, down on the fountains there. I've eaten there. Yeah. I've eaten there too. It's great. Yeah. Really? Have you eaten at the, uh, I think it's a Picasso restaurant down there? Oh, yeah. I've been to the Picasso I've restaurant. There. I've eaten there. Yeah. Oh, Cabo Wabo's down there. I feel like we need to expand Scott Todd's palate, though. Oh, I know oh, where we should go. Giada's we'll go my favorite restaurant down there. Giada. Giada's restaurant. Giada. Oh, man. Well, my wife and I went there. That was incredible. Is there a cheesecake factory? And they, you know what? And there it is. The mic drop. Bearland Aaron did it. All right. All right. <laughs> I guess we gave him the opening. Listen, anybody mentions that thing, they're dropped immediately. No, no good guys. They're just dropped. Yep, there it is. All right. On that note, I'm gonna go get myself some uh, some Oreo cheesecake.
and uh, get on with my, my day because you know what? My time is super valuable as is all of yours. But thanks everybody. Thanks. See ya. Have a great one.